This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Thank you. The goal of the talk is going to be to discuss re and review major risk factors leading to amputations and review existing classifications and then finish off with the Wi-Fi classification system. I have no disclosures for this talk. When we think about risk factors for amputation, we really think about two major risk factors. One of them is an infection. As you can see here, this is a classic diabetic foot infection, started from a diabetic foot ulcer, possibly a deep space involvement versus osteomyelitis. But if we don't aggressively and surgically treat this patient early, we will lose part of the foot or perhaps the entire foot. The second major risk factor for amputation is obviously critical limb ischemia, gangrene. Uh, and if you don't adequately and appropriately revascularize this patient, patient in a timely manner, the foot will be lost. The third major risk factor that most of us may not necessarily realize is the extent of the tissue injury or the depth of the tissue injury. And it, this topic really doesn't get talked about much. But as if, you can, if you can see on this picture, patient has a transmetatarsal amputation with significant soft tissue defect in the plantar posterior aspect of the foot and exposed calcaneus with a necrotic base. So these are the three major risk factors that we have to evaluate when we're looking at the limb. The purpose of a classification system is to be able to take all these risk factors, put it in a concise manner, and to promote a logical treatment-based approach, be able to predict risk and outcomes, as well as to facilitate communication amongst the medical community. One of the first classifications, probably the most popular classification for wounds, has been the Wagner from zero to stage five. And I would say that everyone knows this classification, nurses, podiatrists, vascular surgeons, and so forth. The problem and the pitfalls with this classification system, it doesn't adequately describe foot ulcers. It only talks about infection if in one of the categories, and it discusses vascular disease in the form of gangrene only. A more robust classification system came out um, and was published several years ago, and this is called University of Texas Diabetic Wound Classification System. The authors of this system realized that it's not only the depth of the injury, it's actually the ischemia and the infection, and maybe the combination of all of them that place the patient at risk. So you can see from zero being a pre-ulcerative lesion to grade three, that would be probing to bone, and then you have B for infection, C for ischemia, and D for a combination of infection and ischemia. The pitfalls of this classification system, it doesn't adequately describe the severity of the infection, the difference between a localized infection versus sepsis. It doesn't adequately describe the severity of ischemia, a toe pressure of 70 versus a toe pressure of 20. So when you look at Infectious Disease Society of America, they also have a classification system discussing the types of infections, this is grade zero being no symptoms and grade three being a local infection with sepsis. Finally, when we talk about vascular surgery classification system, we all know the Rutherford classification system, and the category four through six discuss, discusses critical limb ischemia. The interesting part about this classification system, it's mostly used for research purposes. Diabetics were meant to be excluded, and if you look at this slide here, you can see four different presentations. One is the top left, posterior heel ulcer with an eschar. The bottom left, gangrene that's just localized to the digits. The top right, a very superficial ulcer, doesn't look really threatening. And then you have a post-surgical wound. And what's common about all of these four pictures is that they're all, they all would be classified as Rutherford 5, but yet we know they're all quite different. So the Society of Vascular Surgery in 2013 published, in J, published a Wi-Fi classification system for threat and limb in 2013. The Wi-Fi stands for W for wound, I for ischemia, FI for foot infection. This is what the Wi-Fi system scoring system looks like. And it really takes into account all three of the categories, the risks for amputations that we discussed. Wounds, wound zero would be a no wound, and a wound one would be a minor tissue loss. 
localized to digits. Wound three would be an extensive tissue loss, would be salvageable with some, by something more proximal than a TMA, possibly needing a free flap, or a posterior involvement of the calcaneus would be the highest grade wound category three. When you look at ischemia, there are also four categories. Ischemia zero is a toe pressure of greater than 60, and this is evaluated by non-invasive modality. So grade ischemia three would be a toe pressure less than 30. And then you have the infection category, and this was directly taken from IDSA. Infection zero is no infection, and grade three would be an infection with sepsis. So when you put it all together and you put it in a table form, you see something like this. And it may look a little complicated at first, but the idea is that if you look at the green boxes here, something that the scoring system that falls into green box would be a very low risk for amputation or stage one. Yellow would be a low risk for amputation, stage two. Orange boxes would be moderate risk for amputation, would be stage three. And anything that falls into the red boxes would be a stage four, highest risk for amputation. Potential other benefit of Wi-Fi classification is to be able to predict the ability to revascularize these patients. Which of these stages would be best suited for a revascularization? Now, this is still in the process of being validated. So here's a slide showing you the scoring system right here, and then the stages that it corresponds to. Stage one obviously is the low risk, and going to stage four would be the highest risk for an amputation. The limitations of Wi-Fi, it is not meant for venous ulcers, not meant for acute limb ischemia or ischemic or embolic phenomenon, not meant for acute trauma or non-atherosclerotic diseases like vasculitides. In 2014, this system was validated by a group out of South Carolina, and what they did was they tried to compare the actual outcomes at one year versus the predicted outcomes by the Wi-Fi classification system. So if you look at this red box here, you can see that percent predicted outcome of amputations going up from, great, from stage one, 3% to 50%, and what they found was that their observed outcomes, the limb amputation increased as well, correlating exactly, for the most part, exactly to the predicted uh, level of amputation. If you look at the non-healing wounds, the idea would be the same. You would think that as the wounds, as the stages increase, you would get less likelihood of healing, and that's exactly what they found in their second parameter. Now, when you think about, when you look at this uh, Wi-Fi classification system, and, and I showed you this table with green and yellow boxes and orange boxes, it looks daunting at first. But really, after doing a few of them at a time, you'll figure out that this is probably the most robust system on the market today because it's able to, to distinguish various levels of ischemia. It's able to differentiate various levels of infection as well as putting it together with various depths of the wound and soft tissue loss. Thank you very much.